Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Of course, baseball fever continues in Kansas City as our favorite boys in blue battle it out once again in the Fall Classic. You may have noticed some cool blue baseball inspired banners as you drive through downtown. The city has installed these banners with the KC moniker as a tribute to our team. You can show your KC pride with your own replica banner for just $25. Just visit kcmo.gov slash store for sales information. Part of the proceeds will also benefit the City of Fountains Foundation, which helps maintain the city's iconic fountains. Want to show off your blue pride and win one of those cool new banners? Enter our How Blue Are You contest. Submit a photo or a video on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram and hashtag it KCTrueBlue. Winning entries will creatively combine Kansas City and Royals pride. So decorate your yard, house, driveway, neighborhood, school, business, or even your pet. Entries will be accepted all through the World Series. Kansas City, Missouri is one of eight winners of the 2015 Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Culture of Health Prize. Kansas City, as a community, will receive a cash prize of $25,000. The city has been recognized for rallying community partners around a shared vision of health, including the Health Department's Aim for Peace initiative that uses health workers to hit the streets and to interrupt violence. The program has helped reduce homicides by 70% in targeted intervention zones and 24% across the city. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hey, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. The year is winding down, but there's no shortage of things to do. Mark your calendars and bring your friends and family out to enjoy our Casey Parks facilities and events. The 2015 Big 12 Women's Soccer Championship returns to Swope Soccer Village on November 4th, 6th, and 8th. The tournament features the Big 12's top eight teams competing for the conference's postseason title and an automatic bid to the NCAA Division I Women's Soccer Championship. The championship package, with tickets to all games, is only $15. Purchase today at Big12Sports.com. Celebrate Veterans Day on Wednesday, November 11th at the National World War I Museum at Liberty Memorial. A public ceremony at 10 a.m. features local dignitaries and a keynote address from Army University Provost Brigadier General John S. Kem. A Walk of Honor brick dedication ceremony follows at 1 p.m. And here's a bonus. The museum is free and open to the public the entire day. For more information, visit theworldwar.org. Knock down the most pins and take home a Thanksgiving turkey at Turkey Bowling on Ice from 2 to 4 p.m. on Saturday, November the 14th. Frozen turkeys replace bowling balls at this fun family event at the Line Creek Community Center, 5940 Northwest Wacomas Drive. Kris Kringle and Canines take place on Saturday, November 21st from 1 to 3 p.m. at the Wagon Trail Dog Park in North Kansas City. Take your pooch's picture with Santa, enjoy caroling, dog-friendly vendors, hot chocolate, and more. Details at kcparks.org. For more information about these and other events, visit the Parks and Recreation website at kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. The city recently hosted three citizen work sessions for residents to learn more about the city budget and to provide input on how city funds should be allocated. After presentations about city departments, residents took their shot at creating a city budget. Citizens then faced the camera to provide personal testimony that city council members will see later as they work to develop the annual city budget. Good morning, my name is Carol Thomas and I am from the Monarch Manor neighborhood at the site of the historic municipal stadium. First of all, I'm sure all the citizens of the city are concerned about the murder and crime rate and I would like to express that we have plenty of uh, security uh, from the police uh, of our neighborhoods. Hi, my name is Gerard Grimaldi. I live in South Kansas City in the 6th District and I'm here representing my neighbors and also Truman Medical Centers. Top priority for a healthy community is a strong health care safety net. 
Hello, my name is Takesha Ford. I live within the Wendell Phillips neighborhood area that's located within the third district. And I believe one of the most prioritized investments should be within our third district youth, uh, their education. We have so many homeless youth that are sleeping within the parks, not getting education, and falling by the wayside. I'm Greg Lombardi with Legal Aid of Western Missouri. I believe that the city should be investing in the future, and a lot of that is working on urban core issues, dealing with abandoned properties, vacant properties, and giving economic development opportunities in the urban core. Okay, so my name is Brian Stalder. I'm from the Indian Mountain Neighborhood Association, and I think that uh, crime prevention and crime intervention um, is our top priority because we can uh, spend a lot of money uh, bringing people to the city and letting them know how cool Kansas City is, but if people don't feel safe here or if we get a bad reputation for crime, uh, people aren't going to want to stay. Hi, I am Melba Taylor of Victory in Christ Home Ownership Program Endeavors, and for short we call it Big Hope. And of course our priority is neighborhood preservation and revitalization for the inner city. I'm Sandy Sexton representing Ruskin Heights Homes Association which consists of 1,800 homes in South Kansas City. One of my priorities would be basic services such as the bulky and leaf pickup um, and also trash services. My name is Tracy G. Lewis and I would like Kansas City to be improved by cleaning up all the abandoned houses, picking up all the oversized bulky items off the streets and just making our city more beautiful and making more activities for our youth after hours. Thank you. Well, I'm Troy Schulte, City Manager for Kansas City, Missouri, and on behalf of the city, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your busy schedules to participate in our citizen budget workshops. These processes, these, your ideas, your suggestions, your willingness to go on camera and tell us how we can make this city better are vitally important as we build the city of tomorrow. So on behalf of the city of Kansas City, thank you. We're, we look forward to your, your efforts in the future and can't thank you enough for the work you provided for us today. Thank you. The final phases of construction are underway for the new East Patrol Division Station and Crime Lab of the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. We already gave you a sneak peek of the patrol station. Now we're going to take you on a walkthrough of the new Crime Lab. KCPD's Crime Lab will have a state-of-the-art facility on the Leon Mercer Jordan campus, being built at 27th and Prospect. Inside the building, workers are putting up drywall and running wiring. Because the construction is governed by HUD Section 3 guidelines, nearly two dozen minorities, women, and businesses are involved in the project. Sunny Sanders is one of them. Right now, we, uh, we actually have both of the buildings that we pull all the wire to. Um, we also have some underground uh, that will go out to the pedestals to let people, um, officers, into the garages, things like that. Uh, we're also doing all the door security um, for all of the doors out here that will have card access. And um, my main responsibility right now is to pull the wire to get it to where it's supposed to be, um, wait for everything else to get finished up, and then we'll take our, our wires into uh, all of the woodwork and things that are going to be put in place. The current crime lab is housed in a former pharmaceutical research lab at 66 in Truce and doesn't meet the needs of the department. The problem is that there is not enough space and it was not built to be a crime lab. There are ventilation problems, security issues, and problems with the sprinkler system in case of fire. The new building will measure more than 57,000 square feet and will include a separate section for DNA, firearms testing, chemistry, biology, and fingerprinting. The new crime lab will be better located to collect crime scene evidence and is in closer proximity to the courts, saving time and money for the department. Other benefits are the site's close proximity to 71 Highway and how accessible the site is to people traveling by foot, bike, car, or bus. 
shared utilities and services lowers project construction and maintenance cost. At the same time, security improves in the surrounding area by more police presence. KCPD's goal is to build a campus that works well with the surrounding neighborhood, both visually and in a practical sense. I'm Sergeant Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. The city has published the fall edition of KC Moore, our semi-annual magazine. This issue features articles about KC's innovative stoplight program, updates on the streetcar, and the land bank program. Additional copies are available at community centers and libraries. For a complete list of where you can get your copy, visit kcmo.gov slash kcmore. You may also contact the 311 Center to request a copy in the mail. The city's fall curbside leaf and brush pickup continues with pickup for residents in the south zone beginning November 2nd. Central zone pickup begins the week of November 16th. Residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb on their regular trash pickup day. For more information about the leaf and brush pickup schedule, visit kcmo.gov and search for leaf and brush. To view this program again or any other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. This page has a link to our YouTube channel as well as a Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.